We were delighted to speak again this year at the City Work Conference in London with a couple of our clients, City and HSBC, sharing their journeys around supporting the parent transition for individuals and managers in the workplace. During the following film, you'll see the conversation that we had on how that support is really vital, whether that's delivered through coaching, through a blended program with digital resources, through apps and online. There are plenty of things that you can do to support and engage and retain the talents of those working parents. So I hope you'll enjoy the following. Thank you so much for choosing this session. Um, we're going to be presenting in particular the work of City and HSBC in managing the parent transition in the workplace. So really exciting to have my colleagues Janique Jones and Fiona Daniel with me. I'll say a little bit more in introduction of, of them in a moment. But given you've chosen to come to this session, I wonder how many of you have some kind of programme in place to manage the parent transition in the workplace? Men, women, having children, first-time babies, growing families. How many of you in your organisation actually have some kind of programme, whether it's a network, whether it's some coaching, whether it's a, a sort of, you know, keeping in touch days being well used in a strategic way? So not, not very many. OK, that's really helpful to know. Um, and has anybody got any kind of burning thoughts as to what you want to get from this session? Anybody got a top of mind well, wish? We, we are reviewing our operational first policy in itself, but then with the view of creating a more holistic approach to it, and then, you know, you well, moving towards something that is more gender neutral to begin with, so giving both parents exactly the same flexibility to access the uh, etc. We're also having a program that I know you can access from the start to finish because it's um, two ways. We're finding that uh, people who are actually going off rental leave will need some sort of support, but especially managers who are managing people who are going are struggling with having those conversations, keeping in touch, um, <coughs> ensuring that they strike the right level of balance between keeping in touch and harassing themselves. <laughs> <laughs> nice. They use the right language and, and also having some support in place where difficult things happen like obviously oh, deep and still the um, that kind of thing. Um, we've had cases and people are like lost, like what do they do? This has happened to one or like no idea how they're not having a conversation So it's kind of reviewing looking for provision that's gender inclusive, that addresses all the stages, that includes managers resources them to deal with the everyday but also exactly. the beyond. Yeah. It's where we want to be, giving them our Thank you. One more point, let's take you at the back. Um, it's sort of connected to what you were saying about gender neutrality and I guess I'm thinking about that kind of culture change within business to get businesses to recognise both parents equally in terms of responsibility at work and at home. Um, I was just saying, um, I'm known of an example of a business that offers a full year's pay for maternity pay and absolutely nothing at all for um, dads who are on leave. So that's a very example of a very extreme skewed um, policy, which seems generous, but actually uh, might be damaging the business. And that one, um, for example, has only just got their first female board member this year. So with things like gender pay gap reporting and um, wanting more diversity in the workplace, I think I'd be interested in how people can A, come up with the right policy and um, provision, but also culturally start to make that mind shift change that will really make that work for the business and for the and for the parents and families as well. Brilliant, yeah. thank you. So parenting roles are changing um, and it, it, you, we're a bit sort of behind the times if we're only thinking about women in relation to, to parenthood. Brilliant, thank you very much. So as we go along, do feel free to put up a hand if you've got a question or you object to something and want to challenge it. Do, do feel free to let us know if you want to engage in the conversation. We'll, we'll be having a conversation, so do feel free to, to join in with that. So, let us do some introductions. So, I'm Jennifer Liston-Smith and I'm Director, Head of Coaching and Consultancy with My Family Care. 
and we have long been involved in this field from really the outset of when it was called maternity coaching um, and was gradually made more gender inclusive over time but certainly have been innovating in this field for around 15 years now looking at the talent retention and diversity impact of the parent transition and that's really moved through very much a coaching provision either one-to-one -one or in groups and managers best practice workshops and managers coaching which is still very popular but recently through to a much more digital provision fitting with people's lifestyles fitting with corporate strategies around just-in-time provision that's globally scalable that's available to give consistency of provision so we provide those kind of services to many of the big corporates we've got two of our clients with us very prominent city firms so to my left here we have Janique Jones from City. so um, Janique and Fiona both bring so Fiona Daniel from HSBC Janique and Fiona both bring over 20 years each of experience in financial services um, in, in HR in talent in learning and development so, Janique, you're a vice president for EMEA around diversity and the diversity and inclusion team, yeah. um, and you're heading up the, the parent side of things. Yes. Um, so, Janique has had many roles in financial services prior to joining City as well. Um, and also in, in life, you've done everything from climbing mountains, riding bikes, to <laughs> swimming the channel. <laughs> And you have two young children. And becoming a parent on yeah. my own in my 40s. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so wow. much experience to offer. <laughs> Fiona Daniel at HSBC. I underachieved now. <laughs> <laughs> well, hardly Fiona. I mean, you joined HSBC in 1997 on a five-year management programme and they wouldn't let you go, basically. Mm. So you've had many impactful roles across yes. different aspects of HSBC in, in terms of banking, yeah. in terms of HR, leadership, learning. Mm -hmm. And you're, I think it's safe to say, a passionate person around the area mm. of diversity and inclusion. So not only are you constantly urging behavioural yeah. change, strategic change, but you also consult with government bodies and you know, make this message mm. more prominent mm. out there. Yes. Um, and you famously combine a real people focus with a commercial head, which I think is quite vital in this field. Mm. So a great deal of experience to share in that regard. And both of you have been really instrumental in making these programmes happen within City mm. and HSBC. So a lot of experience of the journey to share. So what we're going to do is look at why address the parent transition and what gets in the way of it, what impact comes when you do address it well, and particularly throughout relate that to the experience of City and HSBC. As we said, if you do want to interact as we go through that, please feel free. And then hopefully it will have a few minutes anyway to take your questions in a more concerted way at the end. So, why address the parent transition? Well, I don't know, and I won't ask in case it feels intrusive, but I don't know how many of you are working parents and have gone through that parent transition in the workplace. If you have, you'll know that it can be a career watershed moment. If you want to be a really engaged parent, you already probably give 110% to your work role. How are you going to balance wanting to do that in the home role as well, which, as we said earlier, is increasingly both, you know, as an any gender activity, um, not only women who want to be engaged parents at home. So when you come to that point around the parent transition, it's not only returners. Often we think about addressing returners. In a way, it's almost too late then. We need to be queuing up before that transition, upskilling managers to have conversations that are going to keep people engaged. One of the things that does happen, and again, if you're a working parent, you'll be aware of this, that even when people want to do this well, there can be assumptions, there can be accidental sidelining. Oh, don't worry, we'll take you off that particular project with the late calls with New York because you've got other priorities. And suddenly, oh, the thing that was really going to build you towards your next promotion has kindly been swept away because people are doing things for you. It can be a transition in which you can get accidentally made quite passive. And I think it, both in City and, and HSBC, you very much had a view that it needed to be handled quite proactively. And if it's not handled proactively, then those parents who 
after all, grow in capability, you know, with the famous multitasking ability we develop as parents, you, you grow leadership potential in parenthood. Those people might drift away mm. if we're not proactive in managing the transition, upskilling managers, and when people return, make, making sure there's meaningful work to do from the get-go, as well as a bit of flexibility. I think those have been quite important realisations before putting the programmes in place, haven't they? In many ways at City we felt the line manager was much more important about this transition than actually the employee. <laughs> um, so I agree totally with your point about making sure that managers are on, on route. <laughs> and they vary. I mean, you know, in, in any aspect of well-being, which is what we're discussing here in this conference, managers are naturally mm. better or worse on a, a spectrum of capability. I mean, that's, that's normal. And I think in HSBC, one of the things that you put in place, we'll come back to City's approach, which is very long-standing, <laughs> a 10-year programme now. But in HSBC, from the outset, um, you put in place the Parental Leave Toolkit provided by My Family Care, which ensures that the managers, as well as the individuals, get just-in-time notifications. So at every stage, you know, if I've got somebody going through leave, I'll be notified that Jerome or Nikita is coming back next month. Here's a checklist for a conversation. Mm. I think, and I think that's important. Yeah, and I think that's really important because, again, to the point that's being made, you know, line managers have so many things that they need to do and you find it quite bizarre that when they're focusing on people, it tends to be the second thing that is not really a priority, which it should be. And I think in, in um, cases like these, I think there's that um, assumption, to your point, Jennifer, that you know, um, I, will make, I will make the decision for you. So it's really important that the line manager plays a really important part. And I think for us in the way that we operate at HSBC, um, very much around our digital agenda as well, we are inundated with information every day. So we need to make sure that people can access information in ways that suit them. So whether that's through, you know, I can see it on my phone or I can access it on the, on the internet. You know, we've, we've put it in lots of different places to ensure that not only the line managers, but also the individuals who are going through the transition have access to just-in-time information. But the line manager um, piece is, is really, really important because I think in this transition, they can either make or break that experience for that individual. Mm, absolutely. So whatever role a person has in parenting, you know, they may be a birth mother or father, they may be adopting, they can obviously be a solo parent or same-sex couples. We have to be very inclusive in how we think about parenthood and who's involved and what role that person may have in parenting. It can vary a great deal for individual mm. families and obviously across different cultures when it comes to a global approach or regionally um, widespread approach, there are different perceptions of parenthood and what's expected. So the support, the resources need to be readily available, but they also need to be quite individualised mm. within that and inclusive. Um, but let's think about the bottom line impact when we do address this and we do address it effectively. I mean, certainly at City, you set out 10 years ago um, to have a programme that was then, I mean, it's radically been brought into the digital age recently. Yeah. But Janique, when you started, it was a group coaching programme that we, we put together. Um, and it's, it's had a big impact. But one of the impacts has been improving the, return, the maternity return rate, hasn't it? Absolutely. So we went from, yes, 10 years ago, around about 87% return rate, um, up into the 90 percentile. And has <coughs> continued ever since to stay in the 90 percentile. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a bit of fluctuation over the years. Um, but for us, that's fantastic. So the majority of our um, staff who go out on some sort of parental leave, they do return. Mm -hmm. um, and what we found was that most people we, who were going out on parental leave had probably good, a good 10 years or more experience, whether that was with us or in the industry, that that is knowledge that you just can't mm -hmm. replace um, so easily. So we really wanted to ensure that the return rate was a, a really good high rate. Um, so that was key. <laughs> yeah, and that's a really good point, Janique, because... Those people represent a huge amount of knowledge, client contact, client experience, um, and commitment potentially to City. These days, more and more, we see within certainly financial services, professional services like law firms, consultancies, increasingly all STEM sector, um, and even into sort of retail, fast moving consumer goods, it's almost becoming a hygiene factor to attend to this transition. 
And not only might people drift away or fall out of the workplace if we don't make provision, but they might drift to competitors mm. who are doing it better. Um, and I think that's one of the key risks when you have these people that do represent an important talent pool. And after all, we mentioned the gender pay gap already. Mm. Um, certainly the gender pay gap, depending whether you look at mean and median, it's somewhere between sort of 11 and 15 percent gender pay gap. If you want women in senior roles, which is what the gender pay gap's about, it's about women rising up to those better paid roles to close the gap, then of course children are not part of every woman's life. But for many women, taking that time to have children and being heavily involved in caring for them is a pull against career progression if we don't counterbalance that. So there's a prize to be gained there, apparently 150 billion to be added to the UK economy by 2025, according to McKinsey, if we were to close that gap. And also according to the Women's Business Council, those companies that are in the upper quartile in terms of gender balance they will be 15% more likely to perform above average for their sector. So if we want women in, in senior roles because it's going to impact business performance and because it's going to close that gender pay gap which people are looking at, then this is one of the keys, surely parenthood. And actually, one of the other keys is enabling men to be hands-on carers because that levels the playing field. So it's a kind of win-win for both parents and it's a win-win for businesses in terms of diversity, mm. in, in terms of removing something that was a women's issue that becomes a people's issue. Um, so there's much to be gained in a broad brush sense by looking at that gender pay gap, much to be gained bottom line in the return rates. I mean, certainly it, we've been told by clients it costs about £30,000 to replace somebody who doesn't return mm. from maternity leave. And most of our clients like City are seeing something in the region of 12, 13, 14% uplift in maternity return rates. Well, if you had, let's say, a 1,000 people, um, the Office for National Statistics say that the average return rate is 77%. So if you had a 1,000 people, you'd have, say, let's say, 40 off on maternity leave, 4% of your population. You'd expect just over 30 of those to come back, around about three quarters. If you can raise that by 12%, you're adding somewhere around another five people returning. Um, and that is going to save you. If you multiply that five people who've returned by the £30,000 that you'd lose, then you are saving yourself £150,000, which you can reapply in all sorts of ways, whether that's running networks internally, upskilling managers, running specific programmes. So there's definitely a bottom line impact all around, both immediately and strategically. We did a survey recently um, and 130 organisations talked about what they were doing in this space. And only about a quarter, which is probably reflective of the room this morning as well, only about a quarter currently had some sort of programme addressing the maternity paternity transition. And those who didn't mostly ticked the box of saying, we just haven't got around to it yet. Although interestingly, one of the respondents said, who said they hadn't got a programme currently, we don't see it as our responsibility, as having children is a personal life choice and nothing to do with their employment. Which, you know, in some ways is true, but that implies it's just a, an individual support for that person. Whereas what we're actually seeing is strategically, it's a huge talent pipeline mm. leak mm. if we don't address it. So it's about that sort of mindset shift, mm. I think, that, that brings an organisation like City or HSBC into quite clear focus around this transition. I think it's also a fact of life. People have children. <laughs> and so as and an employer, you have, exactly, and work. And so as an employer, you, you, you have to do what you can to help them with that transition. Absolutely. So, Janique, since he's been on a, a long journey, as we said, it's, there's a programme been in place for a decade now in City, and it's recently been re-looked at, was it fit for the digital world? Could, how would it be changed and evolved? I want to say a little bit about how that journey's been. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, I think I, what I would say is not just recently. We all have always been looking at um, the programme. I mean, we were, I think, also one of the first to gender neutralise our programmes. Mm. Um, so that was a good, I don't know, six or so more <coughs> years ago. And that was very much thinking around being inclusive of all different types of parents. Um, 
and not rec you know it's not just about mums any longer. Um, but yes, we recently ran um, some surveys to find out well, ha were the workshops that we were running still fit for the purpose for what people wanted in today's world? Um, and what we found was that people wanted information. Um, just in time, in a bite-sized manner that they could tap into at any point in time and not be fixed to when we just ran those workshops. Um, and so um, we were delighted to find that My Family Care had a tool um, because I think that's still relatively new thinking because um, I think there is definitely value in group um, coaching or one-to-one -one coaching around um, the parenting transition. Um, and. and you know, maybe through the digital age you slightly do something of that sense of community, but actually being able to broaden out that provision to a much wider audience, we were quite conscious that what we ran was very much focused for employees in London and not necessarily mm -hmm. elsewhere, which was not inclusive, um, and that felt slightly counterintuitive given what we were the inclusion department. <laughs> um, and so um, digital definitely felt the right way for us. We are... Um, we are only just piloting this actually now, um, but able to broaden it out to a much wider population of employees. Um, so that's employees and line managers, um, and no matter what type of parental leave you go on. Um, so yeah, trying to make a, um, a conscious effort to be really inclusive in that provision. I would also say in conjunction with things like the policies that we have in place, mm. um, the benefits that we have in place, making sure that they all value um, and um, that they're all fully inclusive, they all value the same approach that we take in terms of the parental provision. Actually, that's a really good point, because City also, having innovated quite a lot in this space along the way, City was one of the early employers to enhance pay for shared parental leave, which is another vital tool in this area. If you can enhance pay for shared parental leave, again, it sort of equalises and is an inclusive approach to parenthood. It's saying that if you're a partner in having a child, then you are probably going to benefit from some time, proper time out, caring one-to-one -one for that child. Yes, I mean, we felt very strongly about equalising that to our maternity provision. Mm. Um, so recognising those taking shared parental leave, it might be any parent <laughs> mm. of shape or form, but therefore the provision and the policy that we set should be equal. Mm, absolutely. I mean... There was a great impact. This programme's been running since 20, 2006 was a sort of survey of needs. 2007 was the programme launch, and it's had a huge impact along the way. We've talked about the, the increase in maternity return rate. There's been huge engagement bonuses as well. Parents of young children, children under five at City, report great engagement scores, I gather, on the engagement survey. Um, so do you want to say a little bit about what that program was in case, um, as well as a digital program, people are interested in what goes on in a, a, a group coaching session? Because Fiona, maybe we can come to you mm, in a moment mm. as well. You've, you have a tiered program, don't you? Yeah. You have a blended program. Yeah. So the parental leave toolkit is the base yeah. for everybody. And that provides what's, what's called a managed plan. So the individual going through leave gets notifications tailored to their type of leave and their stage of leave and week by week mm. prompts and reminders and the line manager gets a yeah, parallel the journey same. Yep. but then on top of that you also provide a virtual group <coughs> yeah, coaching virtual program group coaching. and one-to-one -one yep. coaching yep. and cities had group coaching on site as yep. well as programs for managers and some one-to-one -one coaching so and new fathers I and new fathers we started really new fathers workshop yes. back in 2009 yes um so recognizing that actually dads have a really huge part to play in this as well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So in terms of the group coaching, what would you say were some of the crucial elements? If people are thinking about what do we need to address when we're looking at this whole area, whether it's an online provision, whether it's in-person, virtual, what I think, are the key themes? I think for thinking about my managers, very much sticking in my mind, I think about providing them the support and the knowledge how to deal with pre-leave and post-leave. Um, is really important. Um, giving them the tools and the language and um, that they can so it's just help make that transition better for the employee who's going out and returning. Um, so I think that would be my top tips for, mm. for line managers. I for, think for the individuals, 
um, obviously the crucial times are as they're working and um, leading up to the birth of a child, but then also thinking about the return. If there's anything you can fit in in the middle, <laughs> um, utilise kit days. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we utilise them enough in this country. Um, I think is a really a good way of helping an individual to get their mind set back into, you know, if they are coming up to returning to work, how they might plan it mm -hmm. and prepare for that um, return. Um, so, and I think for us the group coaching has worked really well in that we were recognising on financial services that there's a fair amount of male domination in some of our departments and often you'd be a lone woman in the department mm. who is, who's pregnant and working um, and have no one else to reach out to. So that's where the group coaching was really helpful in being able to connect with other women or other parents, other fathers who are going out on some sort mm. of leave. Um, so yeah, so that was, that's what's worked well for us at least. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Shanique. So Fiona, at HSBC, as we said mm -hmm. from the outset, it's been a blended programme. Um, do you want to say a little bit about the drivers for you? Yeah, and, and sure. Been? So I think for us, the, the, the key drivers, I suppose like any other organisation, is very much linking it back to our strategic and people agenda. So, you know, we want to ensure that we're attracting, retaining, and engaging a diverse set of employees. But you can't really do that if you're just focusing on just one component. So you might get lots of people in, but when they come into the organisation, if the culture, the policies, the presence and the behaviours aren't there, then what's going to happen is that people are going to go. So when we looked at this, it was really about taking a holistic approach in terms of ensuring that we had a offering that was there for our line managers, but was also there for um, anyone going through the transition that was pre, during and post, because they are equally all important components. Because what we found was, when we spoke to our employees, was that, you know what, it's, there's something there at the beginning, but once you've done all of that, when I come back, you know, I've got my kick days, but my line manager's not probably as uber supportive as they can be. And actually, it's more important for me when I come back, it's equally important during the time that I'm there to, to get back into um, the swing of things. And I think one of the key things that really resonates in my mind with so many of our employees is that during phase. Mm. Um, and the, and I hate using this word, but it's, I can't think of a better word to replace it, but it's about that sometimes when, I mean, I'm not a parent myself, but that doesn't mean that I don't understand and can't empathise, and that's what our leaders who aren't in that situation need to also do. But it's really about those individuals having the confidence to come back into the workplace, to pick up where they left off, not to feel like I'm just this person that, you know, whose brain cells have disappeared. You know, I still offer value. And I think for us, that's really, really crucial to link that back in, mm -hmm. into ensuring that our people do feel valued, they are supported, in this important time and it really links back to all of our values, all of our um, people priorities in a way that is not disconnected. You know, people don't, it's not seen as we're just doing it because we just feel like doing it. It's because we know that A, our people have told us and also it's important to us because that's the direction that we're going into. And I think another thing, Jennifer, I would add is making sure that you do have that information that is accessible to everyone. Because I think there's also a presumption that that information is going to just be utilised by the individuals who need it at that time. But what you've also got to think about is that when people are planning to have children, they will need to see what information and support there is out there because that will help them to decide for them what's right for them. So I think the other thing is, is just, you know, my tip would be to ensure that information is visible, it's out there. And the other last thing I would add is, you know, again, I'm very much about a holistic approach, is about really raising the visibility of the role models, both fathers and mothers who are doing this great stuff, who are working, who are bringing up families, who are taking time out, who, who, who we are showcasing and communicating outwardly to so that individuals looking up can go, yep, that is definitely what is happening. I can do that too. And also individuals at the top, you know, it's really, really important that we um, showcase them and raise visibility mm -hmm. of those individuals who are um, going through this transition. Thanks, Fiona. I mean, that very much plays to these words, which I've heard you use many times, attract, retain, engage, and particularly, as you say, 
future parents. You've mm. often talked about those people who are not yet parents but want to know what will HSBC do mm. for me. And so making sure that information is known. You've put a lot of work, I know, because we've done it together, <laughs> into webinars, into yeah. roadshows, yeah, into absolutely. making sure that people see that there is some provision. It's a transition, it's a life transition that HSBC takes seriously. Mm. And I would just add as well, and I will shut up, I promise, but is when we're looking at all of this and we get the lived experiences back from our working parents, the biggest thing that is I see as a massive value add for us is how that interplays back into our customers and how we do things with our customers. You know, so we are not your traditional, you know, like yourselves, you know, before, you know, it was a nine to five kind of banking. But now, if you think about it, working parents are actually driving also how we connect with our customers. We offer different solutions. We offer things at different times in different ways. So again, we are reflecting not only what we're doing with our employees internally, but we're taking that insight back outwardly because guess what? Our customers are also working parents, are also doing these things. So we need to be mindful of all of those things and bringing them back in. So you've got a two-way kind of thing going on. Mm. So there's, there's huge further benefits Correct. behind the, the practical yeah, benefits it helps of that to be more innovative. and their line manager. Yeah. yeah, yeah, brilliant. And I loved what you were saying earlier about visible role models. Mm. That's really key, showing that it's possible for everybody. Yeah. Um, because there can be a huge amount of imposter syndrome mm -hmm. for a returning parent who, you know, has taken a step back <coughs> from their role while they've had that time with family. They're coming back in, there can be a, a kind of questioning, can I really have it all? I know others have done it before me, can I manage it? And, you know, other people making kind of jokes about, oh, have you come back to work for a rest? <laughs> or, you know, it's all well meant. But, it, you know, catching people doing Correct. well mm. can be really important to build back that confidence. You've got somebody with a tremendous amount, as Janique was saying, of professional mm. experience coming back in. And, you know, if we can make that return facilitated yeah. in some way by highlighting their successes and the other vital thing perhaps that that we should mention quite strongly is is some kind of flexibility around Absolutely. how they work whether that's a phased Correct. return yeah. or ongoing mm. culture of working in an agile mm. way working more flexibly i know city and hsbc yeah, have do. both mm. done prominent work in mm. in re-examining how people deliver absolutely i think what's on my mind is that parenting or being a working parent has changed you know how those before us did it is very different Correct. to how we want to do it today mm. and particularly if you think about fathers you know fathers have completely radicalized how they are so much more involved than yesterday's dads were mm. um and and if we're thinking about millennials you know that all of the changes that we're um, talking about today, about looking after today's parents, will work for us for the future generation as well. Um, and so I think the role modelling is really important because, you know, we all have those individuals in the organisation who were yesterday's dads, for example, who don't really get how, you know, today's involved dad wants to work, blend work mm. at home, mm. and, mm. And, and likewise for, for, for working mothers, how they want to be able to work and parent. And, and so I think the key to that is ensuring that yes they are role models but also have to be real models mm. so i think you know I, i've seen lots of things where um we have you know events or talks whatever it is and we have people who are talking and sharing their story but actually the story that they're necessarily sharing isn't real in terms of you know well <coughs> i am uber uber senior i have a nanny i've got you know the finances <laughs> to do all of this and that's how i put, did my career and that well that's really great but if i'm really down here i haven't got all of that support mechanism so it's about really making sure that you know our role models are also real models that individuals can truly identify with and not a fictional you know thing or person where people are like well that's just not i'm not going to ever have that so you know let's make it real yeah absolutely so i mean i think there's a lot of place in terms of practical takeaways of what you can work with for certainly some sort of digital checklists and timelines really works, and reminders, yeah. whether that's something you build internally, whether it's something mm. like our parental leave toolkit, but also, as you were suggesting, Fiona and Janique earlier, the, the power of networking to normalise what people are going through. And I mean, actually, what City does in the keeping in touch days that we used to run and, and you do through networks internally as well, city parents, um, 
is to provide places where that knowledge can be shared. So in the Keeping in Touch Day, City was very innovative using a Keeping in Touch Day for group coaching early on and you had returners indeed you came in yourself Shanique didn't you to one of those workshops to share your story mm. as a real model mm. Yeah. Mm. you know the, the kind of this is how it was for me these were the challenges these were the successes um, in the parental leave toolkit as well as checklists and reminders which are really vital because conversations happen that wouldn't happen if they kind of didn't have a name but there are also videos yeah, of people excellent. sharing tips mm. and, and again kind of really down to earth practical advice and blog pieces, stories of you know, mm. people who've learnt as they've gone along. So whatever you can do, whether it's getting people together in the room to share stories or it's collecting those into some sort of online mm. repository um, that's pushed out to people is really, really And I think powerful. the group coaching, again, you know, all of them have um, added advantages, but I think from a group coaching point of view, the feedback that we get a lot is, is and again, you'll have the same in terms of you know, being in a room of individuals who are going through the same thing that I'm going through and you don't feel so alone because sometimes you can in one-to-one -one, which is absolutely fine but then sometimes some people do prefer having that group element to say oh actually I never looked at it that way before or I've gone through that so I think again there's those added advantages for each, for each of them but I think it really is you know the most effective way is to have a blended approach that suits individuals different needs mm -hmm. in different ways and let those individuals make that choice rather than it's done, a done to we're telling you to do this that's not going to work yeah i think in many ways what we've um i'm just going to add to that so i think women naturally will share information Correct. and and seek out answers or how do other people do it um what we found when we were thinking about new dads and when we were started with the workshops for our dads was that they wouldn't talk about becoming a new dad in the workplace. You know, it's very easy to have a conversation about the football or the weather or whatever it is, but you don't stand in the elevator with another guy and say, so uh, you're having a kid next week, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so actually that we saw a real power for actually our new dads, having an opportunity and a safe to space connect. Um, mm -hmm. to connect mm -hmm. with other new dads and the challenges that they're facing being a new working parent. Because as soon as you make space for that conversation, there's a lot Correct. to be said. Yeah. So it's yeah. very, yeah, it's very, very welcomed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Jenny. So in a moment, we'll have a couple of questions. Um, but one of the things, that we've capitalised the word best there. It's a kind of um, memory aid, B-E-S-T. Remembering the business case for why this area matters. You know, the impact in terms of retention, the impact in terms of closing the gender pay gap and career progression, talent retention making sure managers are aware of that, that it's not just a soft skill, a nice to do, a nice to have. Mm. It has a business implication. So B is for, best, um, for business case. Um, e, expectations. Remember the assumptions that people are likely to make, the unconscious bias, the accidental sidelining, the sense that, oh, I shouldn't bother them while they're mm. on leave, when in fact some kind of conversation <laughs> preparatory to return, thinking about working arrangements and so on is, is actually quite helpful. S is for stages. It goes in stages, as we were mentioning earlier. Janique was pulling out the, the kind of pre-leave, during leave, post-leave, as well as Fiona, the, the necessity of starting not just with returners, but starting before mm. people go off on leave, and indeed starting before they become parents. So it's stage-based. And if you can do something, and whether this is creating your own checklist internally or a more formal programme, whatever it may be, but if you can do something to make a conversation likely to happen at least once, in each of those stages. Ideally a conversation with the individual's line manager and it could be a conversation obviously with a coach. It could be a conversation with an internal mentor or buddy. Increasingly mm. our clients are using alongside the online and app based toolkit internal mentors and buddies. Leveraging that internal experience can be tremendously powerful and the network of buddies feels brilliant about it as well. So there's something to be thought about around that. So if you can increase the likelihood of conversations at each stage, you'll get better results. And um, T is for transition. It is a huge life transition. So again, you know, looking for potential wobbles in confidence, bearing in mind that networks are going to be empowering. It normalizes that transition. And if you can, like you would in the, the first 90 days in a new role, look for early wins, early wins of your maternity or paternity returner to build confidence is mm. quite a good way of keeping them on course to that future career where their, their knowledge is really applied. Mm -hmm.